More from the foreign policy side, the Chinese government says it's going to return a U.S. Navy drone seized from international waters in the South China Sea. But the president-elect says we don't want it. Now, you'll remember Mr. Trump blasted the seizure at first, calling it unprecedented on Twitter. But last night, he changed his tune and tweeted out this. We should tell China that we don't want the drone they stole back. Let them keep it. Some critics warn this tweet could further strain U.S.-China relations already delegate following Mr. Trump's controversial phone call with Taiwan's president. For more on the president-elect's, shall we call it, Twitter diplomacy, let's bring in our panel, radio talk show host Ethan Berman and radio show host Mark Levine. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks for having uh, us. Mark, first thanks, to you. Leland. Actually, I'll, I'll pose this to both of you guys. Do either of you understand these two tweets, one calling it unprecedented and being so angry, and the next one telling the Chinese to keep the drone? I don't know what caused Donald Trump to flip-flop. Maybe he owes massive debts to the Chinese, and they promised to call them in. Remember, he won't tell us what debts he owes to China and to Russia. He won't disclose that information, so we really don't know who's pulling the strings of our president-elect. Well, I, I, th I didn't think we were going to all the way, all get there so quickly. Ethan, uh, does this make sense to you, or are you scratching your head as well? It's, 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 it's schizophrenic in terms of He's going one way, then the other. And by the way, in terms of dis diplomacy, the stream of consciousness tweeting is exceptionally dangerous. Go back 100 years to the beginning of World War I, less things have started wars. Right, now, Ethan, just in fairness, I did hear uh, a couple folks earlier today defending Mr. Trump here, saying essentially that by saying, hey, keep the drone, no problem, maybe upping the ante a little bit, because if he becomes, when he becomes president and he wants to do something to China, maybe steal one of their drones or steal one of their stealth aircraft or something like that, uh, he can say, well, you know, you took our drone, we're going to take this in return. Is there, is there some power in saying, never mind, we'll see on the, we'll see on the playground? The only power in the way that he approached this is keeping him, you know, uh, unstable. We don't know which way that he's going to be coming at us. Uh, this, this kind of unstable diplomacy I find to be deeply disconcerting. And I guess if that's your approach is so they never know what's coming next. Um, but that is a very dangerous way to approach diplomacy. So, this is somebody why else we haven't... Somebody else That's who doesn't why we know, don't do it that way. Somebody else who doesn't know what's yeah. coming next is James Woolsey, who's former director of the CIA and a Trump advisor. Take a listen to him this morning. Then Donald Trump tweets, keep the drone. What, what's going on there? I don't know. I can't keep up <laughs> with uh, tweets. I don't, I don't do the uh, uh, social media myself, so uh, who, who knows? I, okay, you better start reading those Donald Trump tweets. <laughs> All right, so, so is this the new reality, Mark, that uh, Twitter diplomacy, uh, you know, never mind all the diplomatic cables and ambassadors and everything else, just set up a Twitter alert? You know, this is not a game. This is not a joke. The presidency is not some kind of reality show. I want to praise Ethan. It's nice to see right and left agreeing and coming together and being Americans first. We have to protect American security. China and Russia are our biggest enemies. And when Vladimir Putin chooses our president of the United States, puts his thumb on the scales, does the greatest espionage attack in American history, since certainly since September 11th, uh, this is something that should wake up everyone. I'm really glad to see, for example, Donald Trump finally recognize but his instincts were to say that Vladimir Putin is telling the truth and our military and our intelligence were lying. That's not the instincts we want in the president of the United States. Ethan, I'm going to let you respond to that quickly and then we're going to move on. Yeah, uh, glad that Mark and I agree on this pretty heavily. Um, yeah, the Russians attacked us, the Chinese are attacking us, and Donald Trump is defending the people attacking us. That is not what I want from a president. And by the way, this whole idea of a Twitter diplomacy, the only good news is we won't need a WikiLeaks dump to find out about the secret cables. Well, well, when it's, when it's all right out there, I guess you uh, have a point there. Quick, uh, quickly, guys, we're going to get to Mr. Trump's cabinet. Heard from Phil Keating that he was finishing up the last two appointments, possibly today, possibly early this week, maybe before Christmas. The two appointments left are Agriculture Secretary and then also uh, the Secretary of the Veteran Affairs Administration. Ethan, first to you. Uh, you've been uh, unquestionably hard on Mr. Trump, whether it's in this segment or before. Uh, how do you feel about his cabinet now? Well, I, I mean, look, I'm going to say, General Mattis, there's an unquestionably the best choice possible. We've got Energy Secretary, I question deeply. Rick Perry has a terrible r track record as a crony capitalist when he was governor of Texas. Um, I mean, look, agriculture, the Republicans have attacked the ag bill and the way we subsidize things like food stamps. I also have attacked the way that we subsidize big ag. 
maybe, just maybe, we can come together and say we can reform both of those no, programs. You can see, see with somebody like Betsy so. DeVos, though, you can't really take issue with, do you? Well, I mean, undermining public education and saying we need to exclusively move to a voucher system, when we need to move away from public education, publicly funded education, I, I do find disconcerting because the poorest uh, neighborhoods, the, the, those who aren't able to speak for themselves as well as, as those of us who are doing better in life, I'm concerned about them getting a lesser education. So, yeah, no, I, I am concerned about her as education secretary. Uh, all right, uh, Ethan. Mark, uh, you heard Ethan. He, I think he only had one name that he was okay with. Can you give more than one name, or are you just going to go for zero? Um, I'm not completely offended by the United Nations ambassador, but but let's let's. let's and you're offended. You're Nikki offended Haley. by General Mattis. I, I'm offended by Michael Lewis. I'm offended by Steve Bannon. I mean, to have the Secretary of Innuendo, a guy who promotes Lenin, who promotes Leninist strategies and promotes yeah, white okay. nationalism as his Secretary of Innuendo, yeah, putting forth propaganda. Secretary of Innuendo, come on, Mark. Really, really, come really? on. Really, if you want to have a serious conversation, no, let's no, have a serious conversation. Well, let's that's, have a serious conversation way... because this is a guy who's promoted no. Post no, come on. Fact come on. society. He no. promoted fake no. news. And Mike Lewis put forward this idea no. that Hillary Clinton was involved in a sex ring. You know no. that's true, Leland. Come on. No, wait, wait, no. wait Leland, come you know on. it's true. No. Let, let's, 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 Mark, you okay, know no, that no, Michael no, Lewis no, put no. forward. No, wait, wait. This is in the Washington Post and the New York Times. He put forward that Hillary Clinton was involved in a child sex ring. There are reasons no. why some mentally ill man in North Carolina came to, to D.C. and okay. tried to shoot up a pizza place. Well, yeah, well, then there's a lot of reasons. Perhaps the number one reason was that he was mentally ill. Mark and Ethan, thank you, guys. Guys, appreciate it. Thanks, uh, Thanks You know, Leland. whenever whenever you, have, whenever you have radio talk show hosts on, they always make it interesting. And keep it right here for more interesting conversation after our show, Fox News Sunday. Chris Wallace has an exclusive.